I've made videos about the alternative vote method and Condorcet systems, but there's still one fairly well-known single winner ranked ballot method that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the border count. The border count is actually very simple, arguably the simplest of the lot. As with other ranked ballot systems, voters rank the candidates in order, one, two, three, etc., with one as their favourite. And with the border count, points are awarded based on the rank. The candidate ranked bottom gets a score of zero, and each place further up gets one extra point. If there are four candidates, then first, second, third and fourth score three, two, one and zero points, respectively. It's a very simple system, and it avoids some of the weird paradoxes that can plague alternative vote and Condorcet methods. For example, it trivially passes the participation criterion. That is to say, that if a voter turns up and casts an honest ballot, then this will never cause them to get a worse outcome for themselves. But this undesirable scenario can happen under alternative vote and Condorcet methods. The board account is also monotonic. This means that if you move a candidate up in your rankings or leaving the others the same relative to each other, this can never cause this candidate to go from winning to losing. But this can happen under alternative vote. Also, with alternative vote and Condorcet methods, you can remove a set of ballots that form a tie between them from the total set of ballots and yet change the result. This can't happen under the border count. For example, the following is a set of ballots that gives a three-way tie in all of alternative vote, Condorcet methods and the border count. One voter ranks candidate A top followed by candidate B and candidate C. One voter puts B top followed by C and then A. And one voter puts candidate C top followed by A and then candidate B. Candidates A, B and C each have one first, second and third position. And in my previous video on Condorcet methods, I gave the following example. Three voters rank candidate A top followed by B and then C. Two voters put candidate B top followed by C and then A. Two voters put candidate C top followed by A and then B. And two voters put candidate B top followed by A and then C. And with this scenario, you can then remove two sets of the tied ballots I mentioned earlier. And this gives the following results. One voter ranks candidate A top followed by B and then C, and two voters rank candidate B top followed by A and then C. In the original election, candidate A is a Condorcet winner and would also win under alternative vote, but with the tied set of ballots removed, candidate B would win under both of these systems. By using the board account, tied ballots properly cancel out under all circumstances and candidate B would win both before and after the ballot removal. So the border count is a good system and we should use it for all elections then, right? Wrong. First of all, it responds horribly to strategic voting, much worse than alternative vote or Condorcet methods. Because the candidates get points based on the ranks you give them, it becomes quite clear that if there are two front runners, you should put your favourite of these two top and the other one bottom to maximise the points difference between them. Otherwise, your vote has much less power than those who do vote in this way. But then if everyone does that, some other candidate that isn't thought to have much of a chance could sneak in through the back door and end up winning. Using the board account, if enough people attempt to vote strategically, it can mess up the election in an unpredictable way that happens with virtually no other system. This alone is enough to disqualify it from use in elections to public office. And like first past the post, the border count responds badly to similar candidates standing, but in the opposite way. In first past the post, it counts against similar candidates because the votes are split between them. But this doesn't happen with the border count. If there are two candidates with half the support each, one of the candidates could get some similarly minded people to stand alongside them to help ensure that one of them wins. For example, with just two candidates standing, we might have the following ballots. 50 voters rank candidate A top followed by candidate B and 50 voters rank candidate B top followed by candidate A. This would obviously be a tie. Candidate A might then bring along a couple of friends so that we now have three A-type candidates as well as candidate B. Then the ballots might look something like this. 50 voters rank candidate A1 top followed by A2, A3 and then B. And 50 voters rank candidate B top followed by A1, A2 and then A3. In this case, candidate A1, the original A candidate, would win easily with 51st places and 52nds, 
and an average score of 2.5 out of 3. Candidate B would have 50 first places, but also 50 last places, so would be defeated with an average score of 1.5. Of course, that's not how people would probably vote. The B voters could put all the A candidates in the opposite order to cancel this out, but in reality there would be some mixing around of the candidates. But for the sake of simplicity, let's say that everyone ranks candidate B either top or bottom, and the A candidates in the other positions. So we have the following ballots. 50 voters put the A candidates in some order, followed by candidate B, and 50 voters put candidate B top, followed by the A candidates in some order. Candidate B, standing alone, gets 50 top ranks and 50 bottom ranks, giving an average border score of 1.5. 1.5 is also the overall average. This means that the A candidates between them will also score an average of 1.5. So far, so good. But unless the ordering for the A candidates from the voters exactly cancels out so that they all tie with each other, at least one of these candidates will have an average slightly higher than 1.5, and so will win the election. So the point is that introducing these clone candidates doesn't give them a higher average score than their equally supported rival, but because there are several of them, there will be a certain amount of variance in the scores. Having a large group of similar candidates means that they are likely to have the single highest scoring candidate, even if the average score of this group is no higher than that of a smaller group. For example, you might end up with the following average scores. Candidate A1, 1.6. Candidate B, 1.5. Candidate A2, 1.5. And Candidate A3, 1.4. And in this case, candidate A1 would win the election. Over time, you would probably find more and more candidate clones standing, which would make a bit of a mess of the elections. But it's not just candidate clones that are a problem. The border count is very susceptible to so-called irrelevant alternatives affecting the outcome of an election, in a more general sense. That is to say that which candidate wins out of A and B can depend on whether candidate C decides to stand. C should be irrelevant to who is better out of A and B. The following is an example from Paul Johnson. A clickable link is available in the video description. Three voters rank candidate A top, followed by B, C and then D. Two voters rank candidate B top, followed by C, D and then A. And two voters rank candidate C top, followed by D, A and B. In this election, candidate C wins with 13 points. Candidate B has 12 points. Candidate A has 11, and candidate D is in last place with 6 points. But let's say it then turns out that candidate D was actually ineligible to stand for some reason. Candidate D finished last anyway and wasn't anybody's favourite, so it shouldn't affect things, right? Wrong. Here are the modified ballots with candidate D removed. Three voters rank candidate A top followed by B and then C. Two voters rank candidate B top, followed by C and then A, and two voters rank candidate C top, followed by A and then B. Now the result is that candidate A wins with 8 points, B is next with 7, and finally C on 6. So the order has completely reversed between these candidates. All ranked ballot methods, including the alternative vote and Condorcet methods, actually fail the independence of irrelevant alternatives criterion but the border count fails particularly badly. For example, Condorcet elections won't be affected by the removal of a candidate if there is a Condorcet winner, because candidates are compared head-to-head -head against each other candidate, and the result of a head-to-head -head between two candidates is not affected by a third candidate. But in cases where there isn't a Condorcet winner, the result can be affected. But under the border count, because the difference between two candidate scores is based on the number of candidates ranked between them, these irrelevant alternatives are an intrinsic factor in determining which candidate finishes ahead. So very often, the result of an election will be determined by a candidate or candidates that have no chance of winning themselves. With the border count, ranks correspond to scores, but these scores don't necessarily correspond to how much you like the candidate. With four candidates, the score they get from you would be 3, 2, 1 and 0 but you might absolutely love one of them and hate the others, or quite like three of them and hate just one of them. But the board account has this very strict point system, whether you like it or not. With alternative vote and condescend methods, for all their problems, they don't presume to know how much you like one candidate more than another, because they don't work on a scoring system.
The board account actually has very few supporters, but it is a quite well-known method, so I thought it was worth a video. It does have one fairly high-profile proponent that I know of, and that is Donald Sari, and there is a video of him talking about it. And you can find that link in the video description as well. And that concludes my video on the board account. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to my channel. Even better, you can buy my book, Stuff and Consciousness, Connecting Matter and Mind, by me, Toby Pereira. It's all about how your seemingly non-physical thoughts and feelings can come from your physical brain. It's available in paperback and also on Kindle. Links are available in the video description below, or you can visit my website at www.tobyperera.co.uk. Thank you.